My name is Joelle. I'm the lead event strategist here at the Wikimedia Foundation. Um, and this is the session, The Future of Wikimania. Let me just share my screen really quickly with y'all. Everyone can see my screen? Yes, wonderful. All right, welcome to this session. Um, let me just introduce uh, the topic here uh, and remind everyone uh, why we're here. Wikimania, first of all, is completely movement-led uh, and foundation-supported. This is an event that has grown um, to what it is right now. Uh, and so we want to empower communities over the whole world to be able to host Wikimania um, while being supported fully uh, by the foundation. In case you didn't know, in the past, um, uh, there has been a bidding system um, where communities, locations in the world, countries were able to place a bid. Um, this would then get reviewed by um, the Wikimania Steering Committee and um, a recommendation would then be made to host Wikimania in any given location. Especially in a post-COVID world, um, this betting system is in need of a, a bit of a refresh. Um, we want to be able to holistically look at risk uh, that are associated with mass convenings like Wikimania especially since we're going back to in-person convenings after three years. Um, and we wanna support communities with their locations of choice, meaning we want to be able for our global and diverse community to make informed decisions based off of data where it's, all, where it's uh, safe for a community to convene. Wikimania is also a mass event. So it's really important for us to have um, uh, different strategies in place, different tactics in place to be able to look at locations um, holistically. Of course, the end goal here is to have an equitable regional rotation of where Wikimania is hosted anywhere in the world. Um, and for this, um, I just wanna highlight really quickly um, the work we have done with the whole ECAP region. So ECAP, the East, South, East Asia and Pacific region, where um, we've been working with, uh, with them really since 2019. Um, then we know 2020 got canceled, but we continued working with ECAP all the way to, to now. And we'll continue uh, to, to working with the ECAP community as in case you've missed it, the next location in next year will be Singapore. We've worked with the communities um, uh, there to be able to, as I said before, assess risk holistically, determine um, what are the countries that the communities want to host Wikimania in, and then um, be able to look at the factors uh, that would make it a safe convening for, for our global and diverse communities. We don't want to overburden communities, as has happened in the past. That's why we uh, I also want to remind everyone in the room that the foundation is here to support communities in order to host this mass convening. So that's it for my bit. I'm going to introduce the moderator for our panel discussion today, uh, Winnie Kabinti. Winnie was part of the 2021 core organizing team for the very first virtual Wikimania and currently is um, the senior movement communication specialist for the African region. Over to you, Winnie. Thank you, Joelle. And welcome and welcome back again, everybody, to this session where we get to have a conversation on what the future of Wikimania looks like. I don't know about you, but I'm really excited. I feel so thrilled to see that in 2023, 
We are going to be convening once again in person in Singapore. And as one of the members from Singapore mentioned earlier during the announcement, going to be one of the hottest Wikimania. So I'm sure we are all looking forward to that. So with me in studio, that sounds good to see. I have a seasoned um, panel of three and I'm going to introduce them. So first we have Anna. Anna was a member of the 2021 Wikimania co-organizing team, also a seasoned Wikimedian. We have Nangara. Nangara is a member of the Wikimania steering committee. And we have Linda, who is serving as a risk manager at the Wikimedia Foundation. And what we are going to be having today, as Joelle has just introduced, we are going to kickstart a conversation that is going to help us solve two puzzles around the future of Wikimania post uh, the COVID pandemic. And the puzzle one is if Wikimania is going back to an in-person format, we definitely need a way to determine and plan ahead for the next three years. How are we going to continue to develop a plan around the regional rotation? How are we going to be identifying uh, this region? Bearing in mind the risk assessment that Joel just brought in, and we're going to also be delving deeper into that risk assessment and how it's, it's disrupting how regional regions were identified in past Wikimania. And puzzle two, we're going to also be discussing it's one thing to come up with a region and regions are, are, are broad, they are big, but then how, again, do we also narrow down to the specific country that will eventually uh, host Wikimania? So this is the conversation that we want to have in this particular discussion. As Joel has mentioned, Wikimania remains um, a movement-led uh, event with the support of the foundation. And so we would like to have this discussion really as as engaging as possible. So feel free to add your thoughts in the comments and in the etherpad, the link will be shared on the chat. We want to hear all your sentiments around this conversation. And once we also conclude this, this session, we are going to carry on with the same conversation in the networking space. So please join that space as well. So to kick us off, I would like to invite um, Nangara, to just uh, weigh in on the first puzzle of, you know, how how what are it, what are his thoughts on the regional rotation of Wikimania moving forward? Over to you, Nangara. Thanks, Winnie. Um, it's an interesting question how we rotate through the week regions in an equitable way. Um, I think early on we had a process that. Um, set a European city, a North American city, and then somewhere else across the globe. And while that was great in the early years, I personally think it's not a sustainable way to build the community or to work in an equitable way across the community. Um, I think the big thing that I really enjoyed about that early process was the bidding process. Um, I know I'm drifting into the second part of the puzzle here, but stretching out into three years, part of the bidding process gave us a two-year lead into a Wikimania, which meant that the teams were able to build and do a lot of things. I saw firsthand how that was working with 2020, and I also experienced how difficult it was to bring the first online Wikimania in 2021 and how we had such a short lead in time. Um, and that's a challenge that we need to face. And along with it, a challenge of how we bring these two elements together. So I would love to hear what everybody's thoughts is now that they've experienced a couple of online Wikimanias. And for those that were for, fortunate enough beforehand to have experienced in-person Wikimanias. Thanks, Winnie. 
Thank you, Nangara. And I will also like uh, switch gears a bit and go to Linda. Um, Linda, if you could also weigh in and share your thoughts. I also know that, uh, you know, the 2021 20, Wikimania and 2022, we also have quite a number of newcomers who are joining Wikimania for the first time. And to also make this conversation as inclusive as possible for them, it will also be good to, you know, set the scene for them to just understand uh, how the past has been, why it's important for us to have this conversation presently um, as we look into the future. How does the risk, how has the risk assessment dynamic changed all this conversation about uh, the hosting of Wikimania? And how does the risk assessment that was done in the Asia region, how does that change or rather how does that make this in con this conversation so important at this particular time. Thanks, Winnie. I was very excited to um, be asked to support the community by creating the risk assessment matrix. And the community picked nine countries in the region. And I built a risk assessment for them around uh, criteria such as human rights, LGBTQ rights, visas. And so I, I helped them assess which countries they would like to choose and do the narrowing. So from the nine countries, and, and um, Gangara will talk more about the actual process, but we were able to look objectively at what criteria would make a good first choice country and what criteria would make a good backup country. And the advantage of, of looking out in time allows us to have the most runway possible to mitigate any risks. And I think it's, it's interesting and important to distinguish two different kinds of risks. The risk assessment matrix only looked at big picture risks. So when we select a country such as Singapore, that allows the community that is organizing in Singapore to now look at what we would call secondary manageable risks, such as do we have the ability to have food items that are appropriate for uh, different, uh, different preferences and cultures and religions? Do we have the ability to ensure we can accommodate all level of um, in-person um, meetings that, that accommodate uh, people of different strengths? So, so that, that narrowing just to get to the country is, is where I was honored to contribute and um, I'd, I'd really love to pass it back over to Ngara to talk about what ECAP did with the information. I'll, I'll end by simply saying that I'm very much excited about using this process to support getting three years out, a, a, a window that we can begin the planning and have a very robust event for you know every every um, every year by getting all of the runway possible to ensure that we can bring an event on, on successfully. Uh, thanks, Linda. Go on, Anna. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, no, I wanted to, to uh, relate to some questions that I'm reading on, on the chat um, about mm -hmm. what I also consider one of the elephants in the room here. Um, that is that um, this hybrid format or having had two already two um, virtual Wikimanias has opened up new opportunities uh, for also for the community. Winnie has just said that um, virtual Wikimania has helped newcomers to, to participate, right? Or be a more inclusive event. Um, but also, I think that the pandemic has changed the community somehow. And there are a lot of community members, or we are more committed to the planet, right? 
us as a community. We are more committed um, to planet. To, so traveling is not going to be an option for many people. And how do we keep ensuring that people want to participate or are able to participate and how we are going to be adapt to this situation in the future. So I think this is also um, a question that we have to um, to yeah to address, or or at least I wanted to to put it here because um, I'm reading it a lot in the chat. So now I pass it to Linda or to Nangara. <laughs> I, I'll just I'll just mention that you you brought up a great point, and one of the things that we assess in in the risk assessment is the strength of the the Wi-Fi the internet backbone, because to continue to do hybrid events, which is more inclusive and enables people to travel or join from wherever they choose to in the world, it it means that the internet backbone and our ability to connect becomes very critical as well. So I think that's going forward a really great perspective to keep in mind for assessing what are good good and better choices. Back over to you, Gideon. Uh, Thank I you, can't. Anna. It's okay, Nangara, yeah. please. Proceed. Yeah, okay. I'll wind back a little bit with Linda's question about how we came to Singapore. Um, we spent a lot of time talking with the community we identified countries within the ESEAP region that were accessible, had communities, um, and had the facilities necessary to actually host an event as big as a Wikimania could be. Mm -hmm. um, and that included the online, you know, how good were the internet connections? Do we have venues? All of those things we discussed, we came down as a community to nine countries to choose from. Um, and then from there, we took, I had another discussion with Linda online and we decided that from those nine countries and Linda's risk assessment, we identified two, possibly the third country that we could look at as viable destinations. And then we then went back to the community and um, held a discussion on Meta and let everyone express their opinion as to which of the two most viable countries we were going to go to. And the decision was Singapore. So, and it wasn't a pure vote. It was based on the numbers, but also on the arguments people were putting forward, information coming from community members in those countries as to how engaged they wanted to be in the process. Winnie? Thank you, Nang Nangara. And I also want to acknowledge um, the comments that are coming in on the chat. And I know there's and I know there's a lot of concern around um, whether by going back to an in-person Wikimania, we are totally doing away with, um, you know, hybrid version or rather uh, the opportunity for people to meet uh, virtually. Absolutely not. And I'm also very aware that this is a conversation that the Wikimania steering committee um, is already having. Definitely the future of Wikimania cannot be the same. And that's why we are having this conversation. So um, just because people are going to an in-person Wikimania, it doesn't mean that we will always meet in person and that's all. So that's why we are having this conversation um, to see how that future looks like and what uh, we would like to see more. So feel free to um, add in your, your sentiments. And now maybe we can even give uh, the audience the opportunity to ask um, any question uh, that you might have or rather even share any recommendations that you might have. So feel free to uh, even raise your hand and you'll be given an opportunity to speak.
just acknowledging some of the comments we've seen in the chat, uh, where Mike Peel says, it sounds like the lessons from last few years are being lost. Why do we even have an in-person single location event? I think that was just addressed by Winnie. Or we have to have an in-person event that can be hybrid and enable access for those that can't travel. Um, again, that's also been addressed. Andrew Lee, who is also part of the Wikimania Steering Committee, says his opinion, even though uh, he's on the steering committee, equitable is tough to determine. Ultimately, it, ha it has to make sense as a hub city for logistics, and that includes visas, costs, sustainability, etc. cetera. Um, then the elephant in the room of sustainability being um, raised how can we justify climate costs of these big events, which are almost always exclusionary to some Wikimedians, depending on where they are held? Um, Mike is saying, oh, we addressed that. Uh, but it's also saying that lots of other events have found the same thing. Online is much easier for people to access, particularly if they can't afford uh, travel and is also suggesting maybe we should fork Wikimania. Um, forking meaning having one that's in person for those that like that and one that's 100% online or for those that can't travel. I think that's uh, been addressed with the hybrid um, uh, comment just now. Uh, again, I would like to invite anyone from the audience to raise your hand, unmute if you kind of like want to share and contribute here. If not, please drop it in the chat. Yes, Sorry, Joel, can I just jump in on Mike's question about hybrid? I think it's one of the things we need to work on. Um, I think both platforms we have used have had their own unique issues and they've had their own unique successes. So. Um, I think over time we will be able to develop that a lot better. There's still a lot of value in the personal connections, the being in the same room, able to chat to someone passing in a hallway that we haven't resolved with the online. Um, I think that's one of the values of being in person. Uh, and while Hub is great and... Um, we need to be careful how we determine that because um, there are a lot of places which are physically isolated. There is no way for you to get to an in-person event without getting in an aeroplane of some kind. You know, um, not everywhere has interconnecting rail links that you can get in a you know, couple of hours later you're you know, in another country um, for some people. Um, flight is the only option. Um, Singapore, we have some rail links. If you're coming from um, Thailand, Malaysia, you can come down by rail. Indonesia, there are ferry links. But for everyone else, it's basically going to have to be a fly-in. So, yes, our carbon footprint is going to be an issue and we need to find ways to do it better. And perhaps there's the opportunity to mirror it with a second or third city and um, literally be around the clock so that Singapore hands off to somewhere else and somewhere else hands off to a third city and then it's handed back to Singapore when it goes live so that we can get both the in-person experiences and connections as well as those um, reach out to those that can't get to any of them. Thank you, Nangara. Um, and I also don't want us to, you know, lose sight of the two puzzles that we still um, need to be solving around um, how do we identify uh, the regions that will host uh, future Wikimanias and how do we narrow down to the uh, specific country. So if, uh, we, if someone has any thoughts around that, we would be happy to hear that even as we acknowledge the, the suggestions to ensure that future Wikimanias are hybrid um, events. 
I think that Lisa uh, addressed that uh, pretty well. I think that uh, the work that has been done regarding um, or with this risk assessment um, is a, um, a huge change. This is something that didn't happen before and I think it's, uh, it's a good practice. Um, beyond those criteria that Linda, Linda um, shared with us before, um, I would also suggest, for example, to analyze the quality of healthcare, for example, in, in, a, in a country. I mean, uh, does, um, does it have a good private or private or public healthcare, right? A system to, to, um, that will take care of us if something happens, if any problem arises, or uh, again, I think economy is, uh, because I'm reading also the chat, is also a huge issue, right? I mean, Wikimedia is almost a privilege for a lot of volunteers, but also when being in Wikimedia, even me being a privileged person that can go to Wikimedia, sometimes cities are super expensive for a lot of us. Like, um, I don't know, going for, for to have a dinner outside the, the, the facilities or, or the venue sometimes is super, super expensive for us. So also paying attention to that um, for me is also important. And um, of course, how attractive it is. I mean, again, the pandemic has changed us a lot as a community and, and dedicating our holidays, free time to go to Wikimania, at least, um, again, it should be like attractive for, for, for the community. I mean, the community wants, really needs to, to want to go to, to, to that place. Um, and there are other uh, criteria that I feel super important when narrowing um, the countries or, or the region, for example, um, that Lisa already, already said, like human rights, right? It's, it's a country that respects human rights or the, the level of connectivity. Um, or the community, how much community is in place, for example, or is the community um, big enough to lead a, 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 an event of these characteristics and not burn out? Because I <laughs> I mean, I've been in the, in the movement for the last eight years, nine years almost, and I've heard a lot of stories of communities also getting very, very tired after organizing a, an event of these characteristics. So, um, and also how to get there beyond the visa, um, does the country has an international airport and allow us the volunteers to arrive in an easy way and not stopping over hundreds of airports around the world? <laughs> also, this is something that I will uh, take into account. So um, again, big changes from the, from the past. I think that having a risk assessment is super important and I'm happy to see it, but I will, I mean, probably Lisa knows better than me, but I will complete it uh, with this other criteria that from a community perspective are also important. Thank you, Anna, for those great insights. I want to acknowledge a comment I've seen on the chat uh, from Rebecca, and she talks about, just a moment, let me get that. Yeah, she talks about, you know, I would like to advocate if you have to go back to in-person, why not go back to the Italian model uh, where we can manage brought an infrastructural or other benefits to the local community. Re Rebecca, um, would you like to verbalize that comment and just comment further on it so that uh, anyone who is watching this and has no idea what that model is, can, 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 we can be on the same page? Can do probably. Can you hear me? Yes, Rebecca, go ahead. Fantastic. Probably best that you don't see me uh, on a Sunday, Sunday afternoon, while Ireland is experiencing a heat wave, um, which would make most people here laugh at the temperatures that we're experiencing. Um, I, I suppose for me, um, and I didn't attend, um, I've ever attended two Wikimanias, one which was London, which was exceptionally large, and one which was Mexico, which was that bit smaller the year after. So I didn't actually attend the Italian um, uh, Wikimania, but the fundamental idea behind it, which was to bring it to a rural um, area and actually as part of, I suppose, somewhat taking the playbook of the Olympics, which of course um, doesn't actually necessarily always play out, but the idea that you bring Wikimania to an area that necessarily doesn't have the infrastructure 
isn't known for, you know, being an overly connected area. And the idea is that by bringing it to there, you are investing in the infrastructure of that place. Um, so I know I saw a comment from Liam Wyatt, who's in um, Isina Lario at the moment, and his, his phone automatically connected to the Wi-Fi because it's still there. Um, you know, I, I don't know if, if a lot of the Wikimanias can say that they brought that sort of lasting legacy to the host country or the host place um, in the way that it happened there. And also just as an attendee, while you might travel, in my case, for the first time to Mexico, I saw relatively little of Mexico outside of a, a rather high-end um, hotel, which is probably not indicative of the actual country. Um, and while, yes, in-person is fantastic, I would just like to reiterate that not all people um, flourish in person. A lot of people find crowds and being in a hotel with strangers, and especially when you have to share a room with a stranger, somebody that you perhaps have never met before, uh, as has been kind of common in Wikimanias and conferences in the past, that can be incredibly difficult uh, for people with for a range of reasons. Um, so I think the puzzle one, the fact that by default we're saying that in-person is a good thing and is what we should aspire to, I'd like to know what's the concrete rationale behind that um, before we take that as the, the de facto jumping off point. Thank you, Rebecca. Uh, I understand that, uh, you know, this conversation is also getting very um, active on the etherpad. And as I mentioned earlier, because we also don't have much time on this uh, session, we will uh, carry on the conversation uh, in the networking space. But for now, one of the other things that uh, I would like us also before we run out of time to discuss is uh, once we have a region for the next Wikimania, like when the, when we have an in, if, or let me just say if, we have an in-person Wikimania, because um, I don't want it to look like, uh, there are also concerns on the chat, like if it's decided we're going to have in-person. So yes, once a region has been identified for a potential in-person Wikimania, how again do we narrow down on the countries? Do we still go back to the bidding system and ask countries in that region to bid to host? How do we see this uh, playing out in the event that there is an in-person Wikimania? My great panelists, feel free to weigh in on that and anyone else from the audience as well. I've got to say I've done a few it's never been successful, but I've always found it an interesting challenge and a learning experience to put one together. Um, I know it draws a lot of resources out of the community, puts a lot of pressure on people early on to find and get answers. I like the way we went about 2023, which was we decided on the region between the community, we selected the country's most capable of hosting the event and then we went the foundation or Linda primarily went with the whole series of questions um, it was health care it was human rights it was legal systems it was accessibility visas all of those things were part of that matrix to make up to help us make that final decision of which countries and then we took it back to the community again to, to decide their final choice. And I think that process works well. Um, for the next 24, 25, I think is probably a good process to hold on to while we work with integrating hybrid and second and third party locations. Um, and then from 26 onwards, we look more at how we can keep restructuring and addressing the issues um, that are still poorly addressed, and that is the climate issues, the fact that we can't get to a lot of places easily, um, that there are isolated communities, and we don't want to go back into that repetition of everyone having to go back to the same type of place every time. So, so just to jump in very quickly, because I know we've only got a couple of minutes left of the session. I think um, 
the uh, rotation policy that we came up with was based on the tension between the communities at the time. And that's why we ended up with a once in North Europe, you know, whatever, South Europe, once in North America, once not in either of those two. And at the time, we got a huge amount of complaints from people in North America and Europe of why were we wasting all this time going to communities that had very small numbers of members of the community. Part of the purpose of Wikimania is to reach out to new people and to bring them in the door. And an online conference is very good at getting raw numbers of people, but it's um, not necessarily very good at building that empathy between people. And so Wikimania at its best has always been a hybrid event, right? Right from 2005, we were streaming. There wasn't much of a feedback loop and that's that varied, but it's always been a hybrid event and we should uh, aim to do better and keep, keep the hybrid model, but involve as many people around the world as possible. Uh, yes, I mean, sorry um, to that. Um, I think that nobody, uh, at least in my particular case, I'm not, this, uh, I mean, I see the, the benefits of uh, a face-to-face -face meeting. I think that we really need to, to meet um, uh, because uh, in the Wikimedia movement meeting means, uh, as I was reading in the chat, right? I mean, reaching, uh, I don't know, uh, building new partnerships. I mean, understanding what the, the other community members are doing around the world. So for me, that's super important, but um, we need to, to make us uh, the hybrid model or the virtual uh, part of the conference as good as the face-to-face the -face part of the conference. I mean, the, 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 the um, yeah, the level should be the same, right? Like the quality of the conference should be the, should be the same or at least also make sure that the people who decide not to go or decide to stay at home and, and prefers to follow Wikimedia in a virtual way also enjoys the conference um, as much as possible. Yes, definitely we've got to work on the hybrid process, make sure we have those feedback loops like we've got here now, everyone able to discuss whether they're in the room, sitting in Europe or sitting in Africa or sitting over here in Australia. It doesn't really matter where people are. Um, that feedback loop is important. Those personal connections, as I said, the chance meetings, the discussions in hallways, even the random chance of sitting at a conference with seven rooms running um i'll go back to my experience in washington in 2012 um i had blank afternoon and walked into a discussion and from there i was had a new project idea and concept to work with and that was the wiki town so that was 2012 2014 i brought it back to wikimania to share my experiences and to encourage more people to use it. So there is feedback loops within the in-person event that are equally as important. So I think we need to try and gain as many loops and as much feedback as we can. Great. Thank you. Um, this is uh, getting exciting. There's a lot of feedback coming in. Please let's all meet in the networking space to carry on. And I do acknowledge there's a lot of, you know, um, comments to have uh, to ensure that we have a hybrid event and not necessarily just an in-person event. So inclusivity remains key in the future of Wikimania. And yeah, we 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 continue to to be open to conversations around innovating for Wikimania to make it as inclusive and as accessible as possible. Thank you very much for your great insights. Please carry on on the etherpad and let's meet in the networking space. Thank you very much. <laughs>